Today we're going to be taking a look at the top 7 stem plants in the aquarium hobby that will not need CO2 and are going to be a great addition to your fish tank. Let's get right to it. Starting off with number 7 we have pearl weed. Pearl weed is a great beginner plant and grows really well. Also used commonly as a carpeting plant. It's very lush green, usually grows very compact. These guys grow sort of like a weed in fact and will just spread across your tank if given the right nutrients. Obviously a great stem plant, you can grow it floating and it doesn't need a substrate, although it does do well when it's rooted. But these plants literally propagate through stems. If you want to propagate them, just cut off their tops and over time, after you cut them off, they're just going to grow back even quicker than before. And they just keep growing new shoots. What you could do with those trimmings is you could trim them apart and then with the new cuttings, you could replant them back into the substrate. Over time, the pearl weed will start to spread and crawl sideways, which makes a decent looking carpet. Number 6 on the list is Rotala Indica. Rotala Indica was the only Rotala I ever kept. They are a great choice because they're low tech and don't need CO2. Rotala Indica is a very common species of Rotala, probably the easiest to keep. Indica will definitely get a pinkish reddish color if they have enough nutrients. Without CO2 you will need a high light for it to grow well and a good light is also necessary to prevent their bottom from rotting. Most of the time, if you keep them low tech, they will stay greenish, maybe a little bit pinkish, but if you want them to get that strong red color, then you will need some sort of CO2 or exceptionally high lighting. The next plant on this list is Bacopa. Bacopa is another great aquarium plant. Doesn't need any CO2, great stem plant. Just like pearl weed, grows really well. Although they're not much used as a carpeting plant, they are great stem plants and can grow pretty tall depending on how they're kept, such as the lighting conditions, CO2 levels, but they don't need CO2. They're super low tech, could be kept in almost any type of setup. Well, any setup really, but they do good in low tech tanks, beginner friendly. These plants do come in quite a variety. There's red ones and there's the regular green ones. And just like the pearl weed, you could propagate them by simply cutting off their stems. I will say this plant is slightly more difficult than pearl weed, although it is still a very hardy beginner plant choice. Coming up next, we have hornwort. Hornwort is one of the first plants I ever kept actually, and they served me pretty well as they grew pretty fast in my 20 gallon at the time. It, these plants will literally just take over your entire tank if given the nutrients. Another fast growing plant, in my experience they're even faster than pearl weed. Really hardy, they've got these needle like leaves, which also makes them great for keeping with goldfish and cichlids. The only downside I could think of is that they are known to rot if they have insufficient lighting. So for example, if you have a long piece of hornwort, which you probably will since it grows so fast, a lot of times the bottom parts will lack lighting, which will cause it to turn yellow and shred itself apart. So do be aware of that. They don't need any fertilizers, propagate by growing shoots all over the place. They will grow new shoots from pretty much the bottom of every new group of needles, and they're great to keep with baby fish. Moving on, plant number three is going to be water sprite. Water Sprite is a common stem plant that grows relatively large leaves and can get really big fast. You don't have to have any CO2 in your aquarium, no fruits are needed, a lot of people like to use them as floaters. It's a really good plant for breeding tanks to provide cover and for those who want to breed live bears or other aquarium fish. Plant number two is going to be Elodia, aka Anacris. Elodia is a great floating plant, very common beginner plant and does really well in especially colder temperatures. As you can see, it's a nice stem plant, very lush green. Elodia is also very incredibly fast growing. It's gonna grow crazy amounts if given the right nutrients. And it propagates by shooting these long white roots. And these stems, what they're gonna do is they're gonna reach for the substrate. So whether it's sand or gravel, it's gonna go down there in search in hopes of getting more nutrients. Very low tech plant, easy to keep, and does not need any CO2. Alrighty, and now down to number one, we've got guppy grass. So guppy grass, this is the fastest growing aquarium plant in my experience. In all my years of keeping aquarium fish, this plant will literally cover your entire aquarium. 
The roots they have are for expanding into the substrate just like some of the other plants like Elodia, but they're like the most low tech plant I could ever think of. No CO2 obviously, great stem plant. You do not need any fertilizer whatsoever to get them to grow. That's how hardy they are. And guppy grass grows as long as you have water, which is pretty crazy. Incredibly hardy and pretty much impossible to kill. The only thing you ever need to be aware of is it might grow too fast sometimes and it may just absorb nutrients that are available for other plants. And for people like me, it could be a real pain trimming these plants and getting them out of there. Nevertheless, if you're looking for an easy stem plant that never stops growing all over the place, guppy grass is your top choice. Before I end this video, I want to give a quick bonus plant, which is Pogo Stem and Octopus. Pogo Stem and Octopus is quite interesting, to say the least. They have these really interesting leaves, and I see a lot of people growing them floating, but they could also be rooted into the substrate, which will allow them to grow better, but floating will do just as well. They are considered easy to keep and can grow quite tall in a short amount of time, and because of their rapid growth, you can use them as mid to background plants. So this is an interesting choice to consider. Not a lot of people talk about this one I've noticed and hopefully it gives you another option to choose from. And there you have my top seven stem plants. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to subscribe down below and I'll see you in the next one.